we got to talking one day and and I and I asked him I said what do you think about pulling a wagon and he says you mean really pull a wagon and I said yeah and um, and he said man he said I didn't think anybody's crazy enough to do that and I said we're probably both crazy and dumb enough to you know to try to pull it off Somebody asked me the other day, uh, they asked, well, why the wagon? Why now? And I said, because we can. My name is Chris Wilson. I'm the general manager, and I've been at the Bell Ranch for a year and a half. The last time the, the, a wooden wheeled wagon was, was pulled was in 1958. And um, the way the story goes is they were having an increasingly hard time finding a wagon cook that could also drive a team or would, would want it to. The reason we decided to bring the wagon back now is, is it was, uh, it's always been a dream of mine and, and, uh, and of Rams also. And we've been so fortunate that, that Silver Spur has bought the Bell Ranch and has, and has allowed us to to, to, to maintain some of these old traditions and then bring some of them back. You know, it, it's, uh, I think when, ever, when the Silver Spur bought the ranch, everybody in this area was real worried that, that we weren't gonna be a traditional ranch yeah. like, like we have been in the past. And, and um, I think this, this whole wagon works is just a testament of, of no, not only are we gonna maintain tradition, we're gonna, we're gonna step back and bring some tradition back that they haven't done here in a long time. I don't think he remembers a lot of that ride. No, he kind of does. He was scared of his money. Thank you. Zach was saying the other day, he said, man, when I drove him, I just hit that, hit that gelding in the butt. <laughs> he would, he'd step up there. <laughs> and, then, and then Chris tells me it was scary. <laughs> <laughs> don't go to sleep, Graham. <laughs> the reason we brought out the wagon now is, uh, is pretty much tradition. We wanted to keep tradition alive on the bell uh, very much and uh, etiquette and try to keep it alive as lo long as we can, like other people dream. And uh, the bell, you know, it works really well with the wagon because you can make such a good circle with it. The ranch is located 45 miles north of Tucumcari, New Mexico. We're going to pull out from headquarters. We're going to camp. First camp is at the Cobra Branding Pens. And we're going to brand the Leon Pasture and the West Beef Pasture. We're going to push on to the Hoffman Pens. And then we're going to brand the East Beef Pasture, the Big Flat Pasture, and uh, South Flat Creek Pasture. The next morning, we move camp down to what we call the Bronc Pens. And uh, we set up camp at the Bronx Pens, and this is going to be a four-night stay. And then from the Bronx Camp, we push on to Mule Pen Camp, to the Mule Pens, and camp there. This will just be two-night stay. And then after that camp, we're done there, and we push up to the Medio Camp. And then after that, we push on all the way up to the Hefner Camp. That was an 18-mile um, pull with the wagon and the remoda in one day. And we stopped there and we ran just one one pasture there, which would have been two nights, and it was the Trujillo pasture. And then at a 15, 16 mile pool. To the beef pens, uh, we pushed on to West Camp, camped there just for that evening. And the next morning we left West Camp and pushed all the way back around the back side of the ranch here through the Canadian River country, which was the Mustanio village country, an old Mexican village. We pushed all the way over to the Mustanio brand fields. And we camped here for two nights. And the next morning we left Mustanio Brandon pens at 5.30 in the morning. And I am not exactly sure on mileage, but I would guess from 18 to 20, every bit of that. And we pushed on across the top, fell into the Canadian River down below, we crossed the Canadian, and then we pushed back into the Para, which would have been the first camping spot right back up to the main road here, Zorro Hill, and down the headquarters. 
The, the Bell Ranch is 290,100 acres to be exact. And the whole trip or the whole circle of Brandon was around 120 to 130 miles. We're up in the morning at the break of the day Shuck wagons busy, there's flapjacks in play The herd is a stir over hillside and vale And the night riders rounding them on to the trail My name's Kent Rollins, originally from Hollis, Oklahoma right now Me and Shannon live in Byers, Texas And uh, we got a call last December at the Bale Ranch To cook for their spring works so me and Shannon decided we'd take it, uh, about four weeks long, and uh, I fed a lot of cowboys over the world, and I thought, well, I ain't never fed it to bales. You know, being a chuck wagon cook, and I tell Shannon this a lot, it's uh, not a real glamorous life. The alarm clock go off at 2.50. And I'll build a fire, and we'll get to building coffee, and then it just sort of takes after that. And then it's time to fry meat, and uh, we'll do some kind of eggs or make some gravy, and uh, breakfast is usually 4 or 4.30. So them boys is usually out of here and we've washed dishes by five o'clock. Shannon got tickled the first day. She said, you know, you can get up here at this deal. You can uh, cook breakfast, wash dishes, and take a nap and then even five o'clock in the morning. It's the third week of four. We made upside down pizza the first week Shannon did and them boys eat it up faster than we could put it out there on the table. So we browned some meat and added a little onion to them, let them caramelize a little. Added just a little jalapeno for a little kick. We stirred in some dried spaghetti mix. We're going to put some of that tomato sauce in here. We're going to stir it all together and we're going to layer it in this Dutch oven. Put a sourdough crust on it, a little Parmesan cheese and some grated cheese and it's going to be good. Alright, we are going to go ahead and finish this, this pizza here. It's upside down pizza. We layered it on top, sour cream, good and smooth, pretty good amount. Sprinkle it with cheese, then we're going to cover it with a sourdough crust like we have here. Spread butter over the top, sprinkle it with Parmesan cheese, and then we're going to take it out there and we're going to put some heat on it and brown it and cook it. And I guarantee you them boys will eat both Dutch oven fools in a hurry. I fed a lot of crews, but I, I will probably say this crew eats more than anybody I've ever been around in my life. Okay, and Brady and JB. Uh, they can clean out a Dutch oven quicker than you can put something in it. But they're, they're so polite. Uh, it's one family. Uh, me and Shannon run the kitchen. We call them our family. Uh, when they ride off, we'll say, you know, them boys gonna be hungry and they come back. We gotta take care of the kids. Yeah, Turn the dishes. <laughs> Whoa, look here. Hey, hey, that ain't your fork. Dad, your fork was under here this morning. What's the deal? Did I put it there? I don't know. It's just where they was, and I thought, well, you. Yeah. And this is Brady's in it. Yeah. How did he hit? Hey, did you steal my fork? No. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank well, you. I didn't know. Looking out for us. I didn't know. But both of y'all eat a lot, and that's what I like. Just tell us a little about them forks. And tell us, now, and go ahead, and Brady, and tell us about your fork, why you picked it. Well, I picked this fork because. Well, I've always looked up to Kai, and he he, you know, he picked out a favorite fork, so I was like, well, I'll pick out one too, I guess. And I picked this one because it's real long and skinny, kind of like I am, I guess. And I don't know. I grabbed it several times just by accident, and I thought, well, that, that can be my fork now, I guess. So I started started eating with it, and I eat with it every meal now. If I don't, if it's not on top, I usually dig for it and finger everybody else's. So. I picked my fork because it's blue is one of my favorite colors and it just feels good in my hand. And it, I, the other day I, I went through my through the, the silverware box and I couldn't find it and I looked up and uh, this old boy had it and I, I looked at him a little bit and, and uh, somebody done said that he had my fork and he looked at me funny but anyways it, I enjoy eating, I enjoy uh, the food on the chuck wagon and everything about it and uh, I don't know if it, it doesn't mean anything what you eat with but I guess it's just sentimental more than anything. Cook out here he always gives me gives me flack about coming back for seconds or even thirds even though I'll fill my plate several times and 
then he'll want me to come back for dessert and I usually leave there so, so full I can't hardly move. I like to eat and I guess that's a good trade because Kent really likes to cook, I guess. <coughs> I don't know how to add to that. <laughs> <laughs> he has a way with words. He does. He's very philosophical. Right now. Yeah, he is, full, uh, of, full of, yeah, full of what? what? <laughs> Our cook, Kent Rollins, has a, a way with words to persuade you to eat more and I've, I've, I enjoy that. It reminds me of home. It reminds me of my mother. What are you doing, Ken? Making donuts for them boys. A treat. I normally don't do donuts, but these folks are sort of special, so uh, we're going to treat them. This is a green chili can. This is what my medicine comes in. I mean, ain't them pretty? I'm going to get a job at the donut place when I get back home. I might mean Shannon and and Bonehead the Beagle just opened up as a donut house. We'll be able to feed a crew like this, or any crew that we're on a ranch, but we're pretty fond of this bunch we are, it is a blessing. But the thing I think that makes it most rewarding to me is to see the smile on their face. But when you take a lid off of something over there, a dessert, or you pull out some homemade donuts, and you see their eyes light up, you know. It's nice to see something bright in the day. Even when the conditions may be bad, or it may be 104 degrees, or they may be roading the dirt tired, if you can cheer them up with something good to eat, uh, it's a very rewarding thing. You know, to, to be a chuck wagon cook and to cook on ranches uh, and for cowboys is probably one of the most rewarding things that me and Shannon get to cook for because this is a part of history. You know, when we were camped at the media over where the old railroad corrals were, they used to ship cattle out. Uh, you know, I walked up through there, and it, you know, it's the railroad built that so many years ago, and they had an old load and chute where they loaded right on the cars. And and I walked up that old ramp that was going up there to look out across where they'd load them box cars. And I told Shannon, I said, "Think of the many thousands of hooves that uh, that tromped up through here. Think of all the dust that cowboys choked for so many days, uh, pushing them cattle in them box cars." But to to walk up there, sort of like an old ghost town, and to, to walk up that old alley and, and get out there on that platform where they loaded them cars. I mean, you can you can nearly hear all them old cows bawling and uh, hear cowboys hooping and hollering. But for us to get to relive part of that and walk through that and see it, uh, it was a great deal.